Hello, in this uh, lesson we are going to talk about uh, the Chebyshev polynomials. But before we go into defining what we mean by Chebyshev polynomials, I want to look at uh, the two theorems, two important theorems that uh, basically can give us an overview of what we'll be uh, looking at. One of them is the the movers theorem. Uh, you probably did this one in uh, complex analysis. And the other one is the binomial. Uh, binomial theorem. Uh, we shall look at the some expansion using these two. And then we did it, uh, the two, the expansion of uh, uh, a function relating the cosine and the sine. Uh, basically, what we have, the Euler's expansion. And uh, then we shall come to the Chebyshev polynomial slate. So, uh, one, I want to look at... Uh, the de Movers theorem. The de Movers theorem can be used to expand the expression of the form cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to some power n, uh, where i in this case is the imaginary unit, which is the square root of negative 1. If we apply binomial, if we apply rather the de Movers theorem to this, then we get cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. So basically, it's only the argument that is multiplied by n, nothing more. So from this relation, we see that uh, when I write cosine of n theta, is basically the real part of uh, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. The real part is the cosine of n theta and also the imaginary part is the sine. You can see that uh, sine of n theta is, the, is basically the imaginary part of this number. This one is raised to the power of n. Uh, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to power of n. Now, uh, this is uh, the real part and the imaginary part. We say that the, imag the real part of this number, this quantity here, is a cosine of n theta, while the imaginary part is the sine of n theta. We shall take more interest in the real part here. But before we go into much details of this, uh, I want us to look at uh, the binomial theorem. Binomial uh, theorem. Binomial theorem is usually used to useful in the expansion of the form a plus b raised to power n. And uh, binomial theorem can be expressed as follows. a plus b raised to the power of n is equal to a raised to power n plus n a raised to power n minus 1 times b plus n n minus 1 divided by factorial 2 a raised to power n minus 2, b to power 2, plus n, n minus 1, n minus 2, divided by factorial 3, a raised to power n minus 3, b raised to power 3, and so on. The successive terms can easily be generated in that form. Where in this case, the first term is usually a raised to power n, 
and uh, to obtain the second term we first take the coef the power of a that will be the coefficient of the next term then we reduce the power of a by 1 increase that of b by 1 because we don't have b in the first term it means that the power of b is 0 so increasing that by 1 means that uh, uh, we get b to power 1 to get the next term we take the coefficient of this term multiply by the power of a and divide by 1 more than the power of b and that will give us n times n minus 1 divided by 2 which is just the same as 2 factorial and then the power of a is reduced by 1 this was n minus 1 so you now get n minus 2 the power of b is increased by 1 from 1 to 2 and this can be repeated to generate uh, the successive terms of uh, the series. This basically is the binomial uh, series or the binomial theorem. Now, we may consider the case where n is a positive integer. And if that is the case, then this one can be expressed as a raised to power n plus n combination 1 a raised to power n minus 1, b, plus n combination 2, a raised to power n minus 2, b square, plus n combination 3, a raised to power n minus 3, b raised to power 3, plus n combination 4, a raised to power n minus 4, b raised to power 4 and so on so that it becomes even much easier to write uh, this series uh, in this case uh, the combination when we write uh, when we write uh, n combination r which uh, sometimes we just write n r like that is the same as factorial n divided by factorial n minus r times factorial r this is n combination this is the definition of n combination r so we can use the first notation here or this other notation it means exactly the same now in this series uh, we want now to consider remember this is a plus b raised to the power of n we want to consider the case where uh, we had considered earlier using the by not the the movers theory the expansion that we had considered here you see the expansion is of the same form we have cosine of theta plus i sine of theta so if we take uh, cosine of theta to be our a and sine of sorry i sine theta to be our b then uh, we can apply the binomial theorem and write uh, if we set here a to be cosine of theta and b to be i sine of theta then we shall have cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to power n and the first term will be a cosine of theta raised to the power of n see the first term here a raised to power n which is cosine of theta raised to power n then the next term will have n combination 1 n combination 1 cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 1 then i sine of theta which is our b the next term will be <coughs> n combination 2 cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 2 then b raised to power 2 and b is i sine of theta we raise this to the power of 2 
The next term becomes n combination 3 cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 3. Then we have i sine of theta raised to the power of 3 and so on and so on. But let me write just one more term. The next one will be n combination 4. We have cosine of theta raised to power n minus 4. Then i sine of theta raised to the power of 4. So you see that uh, now there will be many more terms we can add here. Uh, but let me just consider those for then we, those uh, how many times one two three four five then we can uh, look at the generalization we say that uh, the first term is just cosine of theta raised to power n and the second term has i the third term will have i squared and the fourth term will have i raised to the power of three the next term will have i raised to the power of 4. Remember that uh, i is the imaginary unit, the square root of negative 1. Remember, i is the imaginary unit. So when we write i squared, we'll get minus 1. When we write i raised to the power of 3, we'll get uh, minus i. When we write uh, i raised to the power of 4, then we get positive 1, positive 1 and so on. i raised to power 5 will be positive i, i raised to power 6 will be negative 1 and so on. So if we were to substitute this, in the first term there is no i. In the second term we have i, then in the third term we have i squared, which will give us minus 1. That means that i will vanish there. The next term we have i cubed, which is minus i. The next one we have i raised to the power of 4, which is uh, positive 1. So we can write, therefore, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to the power of n is equal to cosine of theta raised to power n plus i uh, n combination 1 uh, sine cosine of theta raised to power n minus 1 sine of theta, that's the second term. The next term will be, now the next term will now have minus 1 because of the i square. So we'll have n combination 2 cosine of theta raised to power n minus 2 sine of theta square. The next term will have minus i, n combination 3, uh, we have cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 3, sine of theta cubed. Uh, in the next term we have i raised to the power of 4, which is positive 1, so we have n combination 4, Cosine of theta raised to the power of 4. Uh, sine of theta raised to the power of 4. Sorry, this is n minus 4. Yeah. This one is not 4, but uh, <coughs> n minus 4. So in that case, this will be our series, then we have many more terms. Uh, I want us to look at uh, the real part. You say where there is i, that is the imaginary part. We have this one, 
we have this one is also has i the other three terms with the even powers of the sine of the term are real terms so we can write that uh, the real part of uh, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to the power of n is the same as cosine of theta raised to the power of n that's the first term yeah the next term is this one So we have minus n combination 2, cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 2, sine squared theta. The next term is this one, uh, plus n combination 4, cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 4 times sine of theta raised to the power of 4 and so on. These are the terms. So basically we note that uh, we, we recall from trigonometry that when we have a sine squared theta uh, we can write this as 1 minus the square of cosine of theta. Remember this from trigonometry, this from the first time, very first identity in trigonometry. So where we have sine squared theta, we can replace with 1 minus cos squared theta. Where we have sine of theta to the power of 4, we can write it as sine squared theta raised to the power of 2. So this one can be written as 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 2 and so on so that we can replace the sign here we can also replace the sign here and we can write that uh, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to the power of n uh, sorry this is uh, we want to get uh, the real part of this quantity. We can say the real part of cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to the power of 4 uh, raised to the power of n is to power n is equals to cosine of theta raised to the power of n plus n combination 2 this is not plus minus n combination 2 cosine of theta raised to power n minus 2 into 1 minus cos squared theta then plus n combination 4 cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 4 into 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 2 and so on. What we can clearly see is that uh, the signs here will be alternating. This is plus, then followed by minus, then plus. The next sign will obviously be minus. And the powers, the powers of the cosine of theta will be reducing by 2. Uh, as we have, we can look at this one. The powers of cosine of theta will be reducing by 2 from n to n minus 2 to n minus 4. We can easily tell that the next time we'll have the power of n minus 6. Well, the powers of the sine increases by 2 from 0 to 2 to 4. The next one will be 6 and so on. Uh, but uh, we can always replace the sine with the sine squared with 1 minus cos squared theta. So that uh, in this case we end up with a series where uh, we have only the cosine. We don't have the sine and cosine. We only have the cosine. Now what we want to compare is this expression that we have obtained 
using a binomial theorem with what we had obtained using the de Morphus theorem. The de Morphus theorem, we had obtained that uh, the real part of uh, cosine of theta plus i sine of theta raised to the power of n is equal to cosine of n theta. So what can we see here? That uh, the cosine of n theta can be expanded into powers of cosine of theta. Because these two, we have the same thing we are expanding. And then we see the real part using the binomial theorem is this. The real part using the de Morphous theorem is this. So it means that we can equate the two. It follows therefore that uh, cosine Uh, it follows therefore that cosine of n theta, which is what we have obtained using the de Morphous theorem, can be expressed as cosine of theta raised to the power of n plus n combination two. This is minus sorry minus n combination two cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 2 into 1 minus cos squared theta and then the next term is plus n combination 4 cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 4 into 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 2. The next term, as we have seen, would be minus n combination 6 cosine of theta raised to the power of n minus 6. Then 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 3, and so on. The next term will be n combination 8 cosine of theta raised to power n minus 8 and 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 4 and so on and so on. Now, we see that uh, cosine of n theta can be expanded into powers of cosine of theta. And we can see the case where, if we consider the case where when n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1, we just get a cosine of theta. There is nothing to expand there. So we will not dwell on that. But uh, if we consider the case when n is 2, then we can write cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine of theta raised to the power of 2. Then the next term will be n combination 2 and n is 2. So 2 combination 2 is 1. So we shall have <coughs> minus 1. The coefficient will be 1. And then we look at uh, here, what do we have? n minus 2 is 0. So cosine of theta raised to power 0 is just 1. So we have 1 minus cos squared theta. So we shall have into bracket 1 minus cos squared theta. And we say if we open the brackets and simplify, this will be cos squared theta minus 1 plus cos squared theta, which will give us 2 cos squared theta minus 1. That will be the expression. Now, if we consider the case where when uh, n is equal to 3, so we'll have cosine of 3 theta, which is the first term is cos theta raised to the power of 3, then minus 3 combination 2, cosine of theta raised to power 3 minus 2, which is 1 then to 1 minus 
cos squared theta. Uh, the next term, the next term, if you look at the next term, <coughs> n combination 4. Now, we cannot have 3 combination 4. That means that we cannot have any other term. We only have those two terms. So when we open the brackets, we get uh, cos cubed theta minus 3. 3 combination 2 is 3 uh, cos theta into 1 minus cos squared theta. And uh, this will give us cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta plus 3 cos cubed theta, which is the same as 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta. Now, if we consider the case where n is 4, if we consider the case where n is 4, then we shall have cosine of 4 theta is equals to cosine of 4 theta is equals to cosine of theta raised to the power of 4. <coughs> minus 4 combination 2 cos theta cos squared theta this time into 1 minus cos squared theta then the next term will be plus 4 combination 4 and uh, if you look at <coughs> what we have there in the series uh, 4 combination 4, then cosine of theta raised to power n minus 4. n is 4, so 4 minus 4 is 0. So this one will give us 1. So then we have 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 2. So that's what we shall write here. 1 minus cos squared theta raised to the power of 2. So 4 combination 4 is 2. 2, uh, sorry, 4 combination 4 is 1, not 2. And then you can compute uh, 4 combination 2. If you work out uh, 4 combination 2, you can check out the value of uh, 4 combination 2. Uh, maybe you can use your calculator to find that. And uh, if you work out, you should get uh, a value of 6. So this should give us cosine of theta raised to the power of 4 minus 6. Uh, if we multiply, if we multiply out here, we get... Uh, cos squared theta minus cosine of theta raised to the power of 4. Then the next term, 4 combination 4 is 1. You can confirm that. So you get uh, 1 minus 2 cos squared theta plus, uh, plus, plus what? Cos raised to power 4 of theta. And if we put the right terms together, we have cosine of theta raised to power 4 minus 6 times minus cosine of theta raised to power 4. That will give us plus, then another cosine of theta raised to power 4. That should give us 8. Cos raised to power 4 of theta. Then the square, we have minus 6 minus 2. So we that will give us minus 8 cos squared theta. Then we have plus 1. So this is uh, cosine of 4 theta. So cosine of 4 theta can be expressed as 8 cos power 4 theta 
minus 8 cos squared theta plus 1. Now, uh, I want us to look at, uh, of course we can look at, we can do more of this, but I don't want to do so many to avoid confusion here. We just need a few. Then obviously we can generate uh, more others. Now, uh, I want now to, <coughs> I want to replace some few things here. Uh, where we have cosine of theta, I want to replace cosine of theta with x. So we had uh, cosine of 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. I want to replace cos theta with x. So this becomes 2 x squared minus 1. This is uh, we replace here cos theta with x. That will give us 2x squared minus 1. If you go to the case where n is 3 and do the same, this should give us 4x cubed minus 3x. Uh, if you go to the next one, this should give us 8x raised to power 4 minus 8x squared plus 1. Now, uh, if you look at this, uh, first we have the coefficient here, 8. This coefficient 8 can be expressed as 2 raised to the power of 3. Notice that this 3 can be related to this 4 here as 4 minus 1. You can easily relate that the power of 2 here in the coefficient of the first term is 2 to power 3. If you look at uh, this one, the 4, we can relate to this quantity here, we can write 2 raised to power 3 minus 1, which is 2 raised to power 2 is 4. It's giving us the coefficient of x cubed, the first term. And the same can be done here. Of course, 2 is just 2 raised to power 1, which is can relate to this one. Now, uh, what we are getting here is what we call the Chebyshev polynomials. The Chebyshev polynomials. We shall be denoting the Chebyshev polynomials by t n of x. And uh, we normally write these ones as cosine of n cos inverse of x. This is how we define the Chebyshev polynomial. Then we set uh, cos inverse of x to be equal to some value theta so that tn of x becomes cosine of n theta. And when we have uh, cosine of n theta, then we can look at now the expansion of cosine of n theta. And uh, see that from here, we can write that uh, x is equal to cosine of theta. So that when we expand cosine of n theta in the Chebyshev polynomial here, uh, we just replace theta with x, which I'll be having polynomials like the one we have here. So we shall look at the expansion of uh, the Chebyshev polynomials and some properties of these Chebyshev polynomials in our next lesson. Thank you for listening.